it's literally too expensive for the banks to be able to lend to the market that 50% today. They need to ascertain ability to repay. They need to ascertain willingness to repay. They would maybe ask for collateral, and most of these people do not have collateral in the, in the sense of the word, and so on and so forth. But with social reputation, something that we all have, it is possible to actually then be able to lend to that market. And that's what we've been doing at Social Lender, building a solution that can actually harness that digital fingerprint I spoke about and convert it into a measure of trust, a measure of trustworthiness. Taking a look at things like your connection, taking a look at your engagement, taking a look at who you know, who you mix with, who you interact with, and so many other indices, hundreds of indices to be honest, right? And what we do is that we are able to provide to the lenders a social reputation score. Now the lender is able to lend to individuals using that fingerprint, the social reputation score. For you to understand the size of this, in terms of mobile phone penetration, depending on who it is you talk to, they say that mobile phone penetration is about 75%. Now, if you take a look at World Bank data, as regards how many people have access to formal credit, it's just about 10%. There's a huge gap there, and that huge gap is something we believe social reputation is going to be able to deal with. Now, social reputation in itself is an ancient technology. It's not new, per se. I already explained to you that it's the measure and it was the way we did business, especially in Africa in the olden days. All we are doing is that we are using modern technology to harness the same kind of concept. Now, the truth is that this is not new. This is not fantasy. It is something we have actually been doing for the last two years. In Nigeria, we've partnered with Sterling Bank with a product called Sterling Bank Social Lender to be able to lend to people like Balogun, who needed to pay his child school fees and he was not able to because his salary was delayed. We've been able to lend to people like Paul and his wife who wanted to start a petty business and they required capital, they required capital to do so. Elvis, in his own case, needed additional working capital. And all of these people were able to benefit from such a technology, such a technology that was able to harness, not using the, the traditional credit score, but using this new technology. This, what I've told you, is not really new technology. It's what we used to do in Africa. And there are several other people that have been using this um, technology to, to be able to access credit, not just in Nigeria, where we started from, but also in South Africa, where APSA has actually been using this technology to give credit cards to students. Now, I should tell you something about students, because half of the people, 65% really, that do not have a credit score and, or are called thin files today, are actually under the age of 35. Somebody mentioned it already here today, right? They are thin files because the credit scoring system today depends on your history. It does not take a look at your present. It does not take a look at your future. And that's what we are using this for. Now, this just shows some of the reasons why they've, um, uh, some of these people have had to borrow from things um, from medical bill to emergency cash to school fees and so on and so forth. And using this system, we've seen an incredibly low default rate, 4.1% as of today. To put it in context, the bankers in the room will know that microfinance banks have a default rate of at least 10%, sometimes 15%. And that's part of the reason why interest rate has had to be as high sometimes as they are. But one of the things we are doing is that we are trying to reduce even this default rate further. We are improving our algorithm. We are applying machine learning as much as possible. We are adding more data points as much as possible. And we are doing all of these things to see if we can get to about 1% default rate. What does that mean? We have a system that is able to determine trustworthiness. We're doing well 
to a tune of 4.1% today. Now, my topic today is social reputation as a collateral. And the traditional bankers in the room would say, oh, this thing is intangible. How can you call it collateral? The definition of collateral, and I put that up on the screen from Investopedia, um, I would, because of time, I won't bother reading it. But there are some key points in there. One of that key points is that collateral has to be a property or an asset. I will not also spend time explaining to you how your digital fingerprint, your social reputation, is actually your asset. I already mentioned that. The next part of that definition says that a borrower offers a way for a lender to secure a loan. And that's the system we've been building. A system to harness the social reputation of people for them to be able to offer it to lenders to be able to get a loan. The next part of the definition of collateral says the lender can seize the collateral to recoup its losses. And social reputation actually meets that criteria as well. In an example of a lender in Nigeria, a Sterling Bank, if a borrower defaults, the lender can actually take a part of that loan from the person's social guarantor. A social guarantor is a part of that person's social reputation. In the case of another lender, if a borrower defaults, the interest rate of the people in that person's immediate circle goes slightly higher to be able to recoup the default of that one person that defaulted. The last part of the definition says, typically having a lower interest rate than other unsecured um, loans. And that's also true in the case of this system I'm talking about. I already mentioned to you that our default rate is lower. And because that default rate is lower, the lenders can actually have a lower interest rate or transaction charge, as the case may be. But what I'm talking about today is bigger than any one company. What I'm talking about today is social reputation, to be able to be, which can be used for much more. It's a measure of trust. Many industries can use this system. I do not have enough time, but I will just say one. One of the other problems, apart from lending, that we do have in Africa, and of course in Nigeria, which is KYC, know your customers. If nine people that you trust say to you that this person is bad and this person is trustworthy, would you trust that person? Most likely your answer is yes. Most likely your answer is yes. And so the question is, KYC, which is one of the big problems we have in Africa, why can't we use a system like this to solve it? But it goes beyond that as well. It goes to credit bureaus who are looking at your history, not your future. It goes to the retail industry. It's a measure of trust. What we are doing is building a social network for trust, for credit, and for much more. The system we have today is called Social Lender. But as I mentioned, this is an idea bigger than any one company. Thank you.